to Second Advent Radio 101.5 FM. Stay tuned in for our upcoming program. Thank you for joining Dr. Andrew Gardner for Your Health and You. This program will challenge you to live a healthy lifestyle from God's Word and the best health practices. Call your friends and family members together for the program, Your Health and You. And now, here is your host, Dr. Andrew Gardner. Be blessed as you listen. Good afternoon, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Welcome, welcome to our program this afternoon. We're so glad you could have joined us today on Second Advent Radio 101.5 on your FM dial. We're so always happy to be in your presence. Yes, we're always happy to be here with this broadcast to help you. And so just want to welcome all our friends in Redlands, those of us here in Antigua, yes. Also, we want to welcome those of our friends in Monstrat and those in Singis, Nevis, also Barbuda. Also, we have folks all the way in Grenada and also folks in um, Trinidad and Barbados. Also, we have folks in the UK, yes, you heard me right. We have folks who are locked in listeners in the UK and also people in the U.S., in Florida, also in Baltimore, Maryland, and also we have folks listening to us in Europe and also in Africa. And so I want to thank God that this podcast is reaching far and wide and that folks are expressing the delight to know that you have a program of this nature on Second Advent Radio, and we're also delighted to, to bring that message of hope. And sometimes the message may seem a little bit challenging, yes, but it is God's message, is the message for this time, and we are always happy to share with you from God's word and the best scientific practice as you move along. And so I want to welcome you warmly, and we ask you to tune in to us on our YouTube channel, our online portal, or you can reach us at 101.5 on your FM dial. We know that you have many choices, but we're glad when you would have taken the time out to pay a visit to us here at Second Advent Radio. And so we want to thank you for being here with us this afternoon. Also, we want to remind you of our key text in Psalms 139 verse 14. I'll praise you because I'm fearful and wonderfully made and my soul knew it quite well. That is our favorite text. And of course, in 3 John 3, he says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. And so we welcome you. Call a friend. Um, sit down, get some water, and just let's all have a good time as we listen and as we challenge to live a healthy life for the Lord. We continue our study today on developing a healthy lifestyle. And we want to remind us here that as Second Advent Radio, we, we want to bring you a message of health that will challenge you to change your mind as to how you used to think. It's not just to give words, but for you to recognize that this approach to healthy living, it will guarantee you success. It may not be as quick as you want it. Yes, you may have challenges getting off of things that are not good, but if you stick with it, if you have the willpower to do what is right, then you will, you'll be in good health. You'll be in good hands. And so we want to encourage you. We're not looking for a quick fix. And if you want to look for a quick fix, you're looking at the wrong place. We, we want to let you know that it takes time for the body to deteriorate. It's going to take time for the body to recoup it as well. But if you take time to do it and you develop a right habit, then it's going to happen. But before we continue, we're going to bow our heads as we ask God to beat us today. Love the Lord, we give you praise and thanks for having brought us here to this point today. We want to thank you for all our friends, our listeners, and Second Advent Radio, 101.5 on the FM dial, and those who are online, those who are viewing us on YouTube. We just want to thank you for them, and we pray that you will guide us into this broadcast, and may people be blessed, and may lives be changed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so, again, we welcome. We want to say a big shout-out to some of our friends there in um, Barbuda. Yes, Pastor Elliot and his family in Barbuda. They got installed yesterday. So a big shout out to the pastor over there, also Pastor Louis and Pastor Morales in Montserrat. We want to lock in there and we have also a Nevis. We 
know that we have some transfers, Pastor Sharper Henry's family over there, so big shout out to Pastor Henry and your family over there, and also Pastor Brown out is born in Nevis, yeah, district number two. And also, we want to say a shout out to Pastor Smith, yeah, Pastor Taylor Smith there yeah, in um, St. Kitts, and also for Pastor Van der Haas, who's also in St. Kitts, and also Pastor Josiah. So we want to just welcome all our colleagues, and of course, our colleagues in Antigua, we just want to welcome warmly. We know there are different programs happening, so so we might be locked into another program, but nonetheless, we appreciate that you can join us when you can join us. And so we want to say a big shout out to Brother Kelly there in Nevis, in Manus Church, Sister Lashley, and also to Sister Myrtle Bailey there in Sinkitz. Yes, yeah, Sister Bailey, we, we know you're locked in, so we welcome you as you join us every week. And for all those who are joining, and also Brother Conrad Smith over there in Nevis, yes, I know they are locked in. And we just want to thank God that you can join us today. Well, my co-host, El Shinev, is not here with us today. You know, she has a previous engagement today, so we give God thanks for her service when she can be here. And so we're here to continue the service here this evening. Now, we we continue our study on developing a healthy lifestyle. And we, we want to encourage folks. We have been talking about dieting, yes. We have been talking about exercise, yes. We are talking about making the right choices. Now, there are some of you who might feel that we are a little bit monotonous in terms of what we are saying. But the truth is, matter it is not meant to be monotonous. They, they told that repetition is the mode of learning. And so, if you keep on hearing something and you keep on doing it, after a while it's going to get to a point where you do it naturally. You see? Our natural inclination to do things right doesn't always come easy. You see, we are habit-forming creatures. And when we form habits, after a while, it becomes a way of life. And it's difficult to change one lifestyle. I could tell you that. It happens to all of us, even me, myself. I'm talking sometimes we struggle. So we know the struggle that men you have when it comes to your health. And of course, we have been schooled in different cultures. We have different cultures in terms of health. And we have been schooled that you have to take this and take that for a long while. And you have to do this and so on. And, and sometimes what we do take, don't really take care of the problem. We just kind of get rid of the symptoms. And so we're here to look at the root cause as to why we suffer. And one of the challenges we have while we suffer is because of lack of proper nutrition. Right? You go to the clinics, you go to the hospital, you go to the school, young children, all it's like. One of the primary reasons why we have disease is because of lack of nutrition. Now, disease can come about because of lifestyle habits as well. If you choose to live bad, if you don't take time to rest, you don't take time to sleep and all this, all this kind of stuff, it's going to affect you in the long run. And so, it's all part of the package. Now, we often hear about the non community diseases, NCDs. We hear about the fact that they, even government circles, they're trying to get everybody to be healthy. But the challenge is that we have a mindset where we, 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 we're very, we're challenged in terms of our willpower. Right? And, and that seems to be the challenge just in terms of our willpower. And so we're here to help you, my friends, live a healthy lifestyle and to develop. It doesn't come overnight. You've got to develop it. And as you develop it, it will work for you. And so today we want to encourage folks to eat more fruits and vegetables. And one way of doing that is to get your fruits and vegetables. Buy your fresh fruits, your vegetables, and those that you can eat raw. You fix them, you wash them, you clean them, and you, you can keep them in your refrigerator in a container on the on a shelf that as soon as you open the fridge, is right in your face. So you see there your fruits, the vegetables, and you eat generously of, the, generously of these things every day. Your right portion of fruits and vegetables, eat them every day. They're going to help you. And why are they going to help you? Because we emphasize the fact that at our last broadcast about two weeks ago, we, we, we talked about the, a diet high in fiber, low in fat. Now, what do you get from vegetables? You get fiber, you get nutrients, you also get water, you also get salt as well. Surprising other folks who know that there's salt in your vegetable already. And so some people don't really need to put salt in your food. Eh? The challenge for us, our taste buds have become so 
aligned. I, I don't want to use the word perverted, but that's the word that is used. I want to say another softer word, aligned. Our taste bud are aligned to appreciate more of the things that are not necessarily good for us. Huh? Salt is good, but excessive salt is bad. It could cause problems for your heart. It could cause problems for your kidneys. It can cause problems for your liver. So you want to make sure that you don't overwork these organs because when they overwork because of a diet high in salt and, and so forth and a diet high in fat, it creates more health problems for you. And so you want to make sure that when you consume your vegetables and your fruits, you're getting fiber, you're getting roughage. And these roughage are designed not only to, you see, what you get in your fruits, you're getting vitamins, vitamins, you're getting calcium, you're getting different kind of the, the vitamins. We're going to go to those later on. I'm just going to give a broad perspective now. You're getting all what you need to get from the food. Now, of course, some fruits and vegetables may not have been the required nutrients or the enzyme because of the kind of processing they go through. All right? But nonetheless, we want to make sure that we get food that are in its organic state as much as possible. I know it's very challenging because when you look at the market out there, there's a lot of pesticides and herbicides. There's, there's a lot of chemicals that have been used now to keep away worm, mildew, and all the other stuff that happens. I know because I used to farm as well, so I know that sometimes you have to take the risk and don't use some of these things, but then you run the risk. If you don't use them, then you lose your crop. And so we are to catch 22 situations, but they have some nice herbal stuff like the neem leaf. The neem leaf and also garlic, also other bushes around that tend to keep away mosquito and those kind of stuff. And so if you have neem tree, yes, you can put some neem branch in a drum of water and after a couple of days you take that out, you water your plant to them and not only do you water your plant, but also it keeps off these things off your plants, you know. And sometimes you can use garlic water. Yes, I know folks say, well, it's kind of expensive. But look, hey, when it comes to your health, you have to do what is best for your health right now. Right? And so we're just talking about the preservation of the fruits and the vegetables. So you want to, you want to put them in a spot where you can see them. Now, what did the told me in terms of vegetables? I make sure I keep them in an area where... I have access to them easily. You don't put them where you can see them. Put them where you can see them. Also, those that you don't need to refrigerate, keep them on your on your countertop. Or if you have an island in a home, that little area there that is built up apart from the cupboards, you can keep them on the island in a nice little dish there. And so when you walk from one room to the next, uh, walk into the kitchen, you can see them right there. They're right there before your eyes so that you can always be reminded that I need to eat my fruits and my vegetables. Also, if you are a working individual, you could walk with your fruits and vegetables in your bag. When you walk with your lunch, if you walk with your lunch, you have another container with your fruits there. So if you feel pepperish mid-morning, you had a breakfast at 7 o'clock and now it's about 10 o'clock and you start to feel famished or you take a break, you can have a few slices of apple or some oranges or some grapes or a banana you know have these things around so that you can help to keep yourself going and it's better to use those things than for you to engage in maybe chewing a gum or using a sweet or having a chocolate bar it's more healthy to have a fruit or a, or a vegetables or if you want to be um like those folks who are very ambitious about the vegetables now you can use cucumber you walk with some nice cucumber and if you have a nice homemade dip or if you want to use a ranch dressing or something like that you walk with it or whichever dressing you favor or if you want to make your own you walk with that in a container and so when you get a break now you 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 you, you slice the cucumber you know you wash it and you slice it in in um slices not dice them you know so you have some long strip and so at least you dip you know, and you eat and have a nice crunchy taste in the mouth and so forth. And so you want to do that to make sure that you have enough 
of your fruits and the vegetables. Also, you want to enjoy because stir fry vegetables, you know. I like to stir fry vegetables from time to time. It gives you a good feeling. And it is good when you can stir fry. And it's good when you could steam vegetables, you know, steam them, not boil them. You know, so when you take them and you eat into them now, they give a nice crunchy taste. Now, sometimes we, we, we overcook them or sometimes we may cover the pot like I do sometimes. And you, you find that even when it's finished cooking, you, you have to kind of leave the cover off so that the, the color remains nice and green. By this point in time, we're going to pause for a break as we listen to some music as we continue broadcast here in Second Heaven to do 101.5 on your FM dial. For wife, you saved my little child. God, you did it just to show what a healing God you are. The sickness now is gone, and the pain is far removed. God, all you really show. Is what a healing God you are. You are a healer, great redeemer, my doctor, sweet savior. And with just one word, you can take control. And with just one touch, you can make me whole. What a healing God you are What a healing God you are So when the doctor said they can't Lord, you said you will God, you said it just to show What a healing God you are and all the miracles you've done, all the healings you display, God, all I want to say is what a healing God you are. You are a healer, great redeemer, my doctor, sweet savior. And with just one word, you can take control. And with just one touch, you can make me whole. What a healing God you are. What a healing God you are. You are a healer, great redeemer. My doctor, sweet savior, and with just one word, you can take control, and with just one touch, you can make me whole, what a healing God you are, what a healing God you much welcome back welcome back welcome back as we continue yes the healing god you are so god is a healer and he has asked us to bring a message of hope to let folks know you can be healed in jesus name and so as we conclude our our aspect of the ways to eat more fruits and vegetables we want to include more salads yes more cluttered salads include a variety of vegetables like broccoli yes peppers cabbages 
tomatoes, carrots, dark green leaves, colored green, and kale. Yeah, these are good stuff. And um, I just want to let you know that you can make a nice um, smoothie in the morning using um, kale. You know, a kale with banana, and you could have some soy milk with it, and you also can put some almond nut in it, or walnut, and it's a nice filling. And also, you you put a cup of oats in it. Yes, you put a cup of oats in that, and that is a com complete meal in itself, right there. So it's a uh, kale, right, or colored green, or if you want to use those. We call it English spinach, the running spinach, yeah. And you you can put those in there with the banana, the oats, and the soy milk, and some walnut or almond. And that will be a good way to nourish your body. And this drink is good for your heart. Yes, it's good for your heart. Because the oats is good. It has a lot of roughage. The banana has roughage. It also has potassium. And you have the walnut. You get your vitamins and other things from walnut and almond, right? So you're having a combination of stuff right there in that in that drink. I, I do it from time to time. So what I encourage folks to do that is very simple. It doesn't take much time. It takes about maybe five or less than five minutes to do that. And so forth, you want to make sure you can use either frozen banana or you can use fresh banana that is not frozen. All right? And so you want to do that as well. Also, I want to urge you. As you eat, if you're eating a food, a complete meal with um, your starch, your vegetables, your protein, and you want to have nuts or maybe fruit afterwards, something like a dessert, dessert, then you want to have all that on the table one time. One, um, one of my inspired writers said that when you're going to eat, put everything on the table one time. Don't move from the table to get something, put everything there. So if you're going to have some nuts, like I sometimes have some cashew or some pecan, whatever nuts I have around, or some almond, or if not, if it's a slice of homemade cake or a slice of homemade bread or some kind of dessert you make, um, you can also um, have everything right there. And so while you're sitting eating, you consume everything one time so that there's no need for you to be snacking afterwards. So when you finish eat, you have while you sit for a few minutes, the body is already digesting the food. And then, of course, to aid the digestion, you can just get up and go for a nice walk. Not a, not a brisk walk, but just a slow, casual walk. And that walk is indigestion. Also, that walk also keeps you from um, catching what we call nigritis, you know. They call it black people syndrome when you finish it. But then the truth is not just black people, it's everybody. Because the truth is, when you eat the blood from the body, everything is centered in the stomach. So that most of the blood in your body is now in the stomach to help with the eating digestion. That's why sometimes you feel drowsy because you all the blood coming from your brains everywhere. Everything is centered in the stomach. You see, when we talk about we're faithful and wonderfully made, the creator knew what he was doing. So much so that you, you get a time to rest, of course. You don't have to rush. You see, a lot of folks, they get an awful lunch, typically. And it's always a rush thing because sometimes if you didn't walk with your own lunch, it means that you have to drive a distance or walk a distance to pick up your lunch. Or if you didn't pre-order, it means that you're in the line for almost 45 minutes at some eating places and then by the time you get back in the workplace now with the lunch now we have just about 10 minutes to eat the lunch so it's a hosting process and so you don't get to sit down and relax and so we want to encourage work as much as possible if it's possible then you prepare your food at home you work with it it's, it's a good economy you can save yourself a lot of money and also it saves you time as well because if you have to take your lunch at 12 or maybe at 1 o'clock it means therefore that by the time it clock it one, all it takes is just a, a two minutes for you to fetch your lunch from your where you have it, if you put it in the fridge or you have it in your bag, close by in your office if you work in the office, or if you work in a place where it has a kitchenette and you have to heat up your food, it takes about five minutes to do that. And so you have enough time where you can take a time to sit and eat, 
not to be in a hurry and then after you finish eating now you can you can go for a nice walk come to the office walk down the staircase don't take the elevator just walk down and just have a nice schedule walk back up and down and all that with aid and digestion and you'll be surprised to see that that process alone will help you to be alert after lunch as opposed to being drowsy because there's a tendency for folks to feel drowsy after lunch right so we want to make sure that we keep up and keep alert and so eat your fruits and your vegetables and also your salads make sure it's i like to eat my salad before you know if i'm going to eat something like brown rice and maybe some bean loaf or maybe some fish i eat fish i don't eat meat and those things right and so after I finish my like my um cucumbers tomatoes and um what you call it now any other kind of vegetables that you can eat raw sometimes you can cut up the broccoli and eat the broccoli raw also celery sticks and those kind of stuff you can put all those in the salad yeah and you can put in um um those sprouts yeah they have some alpha fresh sprout that is good stuff if you can manage it in terms of the finance you can do that and also you can um put in brushes sprout yeah you can you gotta you gotta steam those right and so you have your salad there and so what to do if i have to heat up my food i will start with my salad you know use my salad dressing if it's a local thing or whatever and i have that there and so while that is there then i have my steam veg so i can have my carrot my broccoli and other stuff that are steam on the side there or um table squash whatever vegetables you have there those have been steamed to what you wanted and so you have your salad before because that's how they do it when you go to those big restaurants you 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 order a meal and then they first come and they bring your salad for some people it might be a bowl of soup appetizers some folks is a salad and so while the main course has been fixed you have your salad to to start with and so by the time your salad is finished now and you're ready now for the main thing it may take a little while but then the main course comes now you have your thing and if you are going if you're in a place where you have buffet then you're in a place where you can choose now you can choose your portion you can choose the amount you want to eat don't overeat right don't overkill it like me now if i'm really hungry and i haven't eaten well before I normally start with a bowl of soup, a nice vegetable soup that will break the gas out. Yeah, bring out the gas, you know, take out the gas, and then after finish that, let that dry just for a few minutes. Then I will talk, go on my salad, my cucumber, tomatoes, lettuce, whatever. And then, of course, when I go to the buffet table now, I will then take my main course if it's rice, I don't do pasta, if it's rice or provision, whatever. Then you take your protein and of course you go for your steam veg now and you have your nice meal there and of course I don't eat and drink so I wouldn't encourage you to do that but I know if you have to do that do it in moderation it's not the best approach but I know again all habits die hard all right and so that's about it for the food part of it now we want to also when we develop a healthy lifestyle we also want to think about we need to free ourselves we need to free ourselves of dependence on tobacco alcohol and illicit drugs now that seems to be plaguing society right now the use of tobacco illicit drugs etc etc so you want to make sure that you avoid these things as much as possible and if you are hooked on it then you have to find a way to wean yourself off of it because smoking creates a lot of challenges it causes cancer yeah it causes um cancer of the lungs the esophagus it also create cause emphysema right so you want to make sure that you and um you keep yourself off of these things as much as possible again there's some of to come in a society where you're encouraged to smoke and to drink and so forth it, it, it makes you feel like a man or feel like a woman no these things don't make you feel like a man or a woman it's just habit forming and so those who encourage you that they're not really telling you right smoking is just a habit forming and some folks will say well okay well the father made the herb to smoke no the father made the herb to smoke all right and people need to come out of that misconception 
the, 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 these things that you use, they have med this medicinal purposes, yes, medicinal properties, but the best way of using it is not by smoking it. The best way to use it is by drinking it as a tea. All right? So those who are lighting up a smoking and puffing all the smoke, thinking where they're getting on a high, what they're doing that they're slowly poisoning the system, and after a while now they're going to come up with all kinds of diseases because what? This is what happened now. Because disease doesn't come upon you right away. Sometimes you think, well, okay, I'm smoking 15 years, I'm smoking for 20 years, I'm smoking for 50 years, and I'm still alive. Yes, give God thanks for your life. It's the mercy of God that has kept your life. Not because of your skill. The mercy of God that has kept many of us alive. And instead of we being thankful that we are kept alive, we, we keep on indulging in habits that are not good. All right? And so the smoking causes a lot of problems, premature deaths every year. I'm not going to give any statistics because sometimes you give people statistics, it doesn't help. Just telling plain truth, it causes problem. Thousands, millions die every day because of that. Some from first and smoking, some from second and smoking. A lot of folks die from over alcoholic use where they become alcoholic. Now, there's some folks that say, I'm a social drinker. What's the big deal? Yes, it's a big deal because what? You're a social drinker, but then you cannot stop drinking as a social drinker. And that means you can't put that with a bottle. Is an indication that you're hooked as a social drinker. And after a while now, you may not be getting drunk like other people get drunk, but that social drink will start to act internally now where your liver starts to get affected. And when your liver starts to get affected now, you end up with what it calls cirrhosis of the liver. You don't want that. Because when the liver starts to go bad, it means that you have a problem, a major problem in terms of keeping your body in tip-top shape. So you want to make sure that you avoid things that are harmful for your body. The Bible says in Proverbs 20, wine is a marker, strong thing is raging, and whosoever see whereby is not wise. And he said, look not to the bottle when it is red, because it's still like an adder. People deceive. People believe that it's okay. The Bible says wine is a mucker, alcohol is a mucker. And it mocks you because when you say a guy is drunk and he's stuck all over the place, people can take advantage and that's what the Bible says. He falls down, he knocks his head, he walks across the road, he gets knocked down, or he goes to a place and somebody recognizes he's drunk and they take advantage of him or, or her. And so you want to make sure that you always find yourself in a sober mindset so that you cannot be taken advantage of all right so you want to make sure that you quit harmful habits now as i said before we are creatures of habit and we grew up in societies where we see different vices it does not be smoking it does not be drinking it could be sexual perversion it could be so many things it could be stealing as long as you get into a vice situation now, it's very difficult for you to come out of it easily. And sometimes you need to get professional help huh? so that you can get out of it slowly. And when we say to quit smoking, you may not be able to quit it right away because your body has a going accustomed to the smoking. In other words, even though it's bad for you, the body gets accustomed now, so the body's as a craving or urging you to get that stuff because your body does well. It's not that your body does well. In other words, you have trained your body to accept something that is bad. And so after several years and uh, many years of doing it now, the body now becomes accustomed. So the body is saying, hey, even though the brain is saying, ah, oh, ain't good, something is saying, look, hey, drink some because that's how your body is going to feel good. And the truth of the matter is, we have become so degenerative now in our health that when your body starts to crave what is not good for you, and then you feel a level of comfort by doing it, it says that we are in bad shape. Mentally, socially, physiologically, all the way around, we are in bad shape. When your body starts to accept what is bad and not what is good, 
it means that we're in a very bad state of affairs as people. And so it becomes very difficult. That's why we talk about the willpower. And so if we're going to develop a healthy lifestyle, we have to pause and ask ourselves the question, am I really comfortable? Am I really doing okay? Or is I'm getting a wrong signal from the body? Because when your body craves alcohol or you crave this, this smoking, you see what happens, we become hooked. And when we become hooked on something, it's very bad to come out of it. Some people hooked on sex. Yeah. Some folks feel they can live without it. But you could kill them as well. I mean, God made it for us to enjoy, but within the bonds of marriage. Some folks find themselves doing it outside of marriage and they can't stop. Because they develop this habit, they must do it. Because it's something good. And those who are married can testify it's something good. But at the same time, you got to understand that it's reserved for within the bonds of marriage. Huh? And if you develop the habit of doing it outside, we want to urge you to pause and think. And ask us the question, is this the best way? I know it's not going to be easy. Everybody who have overcome a sex a perversion could tell you it took them years. As long as you start to form that habit, you taste that thing. Look, hey, it's going to hook on you. It's going to bamboozle your mind in your head. And every day you walk around feeling like you feel, Lord, I must get this or else I can't survive. Because what you have trained your body to accept something that it shouldn't accept at the wrong time. You have trained your body to be satisfied with alcohol when deep down within you know the alcohol is bad for you. But you want to be in thing, peer pressure from your peers, pressure from your co-workers, pressure from your significant other, pressure from so many individuals. I mean young men see the father drink, they see the father smoke, and as far as they're concerned, they want to smoke too. They don't think about the danger of doing it. Yes, your father may have been doing it for years, but the guy could be suffering and not telling you. Because sometimes you're feeling pain, but we don't want the body to know we're having pain. Because the pain can be traced back to some habits that we've been doing. And so the challenge for us is that we need the willpower to change what we're doing. Alright? And so we want to encourage folks to try your best. Seek help. Go to places where you can get help. Go to centers that are uh, centers that cater for folks with habits with um who are people who have different habits like alcoholics in us or those people who have smoking want to stop smoking. Go to go and seek help from health officials, from your doctor, from your health provider, healthcare provider. Seek help. Don't stay there and die. Seek help. Because there's help for you. Yes, it will take some time. Yes, it will take some willpower. But if you really want to live healthy, then you must find a way of curbing and of getting over some of these things in your life. All right. And so we want to make sure that you keep off of those things. Now, some people say, well, oh, the Bible says you can take a wine for the stomach sake. Yes, the Bible did say that. But it's on account of the fact that the character in the Bible had an issue now was told that his health issue could be resolved by taking a little of the, the wine, which is alcoholic wine, to help suit whatever. But it's not a recipe or it's not a, a, a permission for you to go and drink yourself silly. It takes them for the stomach sake. Now you, you find some health food stores or pharmacies have some tonics and some of these tonics have been alcohol in it. Like SS tonic and other tonics. It has alcohol and it says to you if you operate machine or you drive. If you drive these things avoid driving them if you're taking certain kind of tonics. Because your vision can be impaired. Your whole mindset can be impaired. And you can find yourself in problems if you use these things when you're taking certain kind of vitamins and tonics and so on to build you up all right so there's some purpose in it there's some areas you can benefit but you want to make sure that you do not overdo it but that you do things in moderation
all right now you want to avoid street drugs you know there are a lot of drugs on the street right now and then in recent time they have decriminalized a certain amount of marijuana and so you find a lot of guys now are out in the street and they are really lighting up and smoking up but you need to understand that even though a certain amount of this thing is decriminalized they got to understand that their health is important. The government officials, yes, they're trying to prevent folks from going to jail, but then these folks who are being prevented from going to jail now, well, they're just smoking themselves silly. And they don't understand that they may not end up in jail, but they get up in the hospital or in the grave. So either way, if the jail don't catch you, they have to look at you. And then it's either you're going to stop smoke or you're going to smoke into your detriment. There's no, there's no other way about it. So we want to encourage folks that there's hope for you. You're not, you're, all is not lost. All is not lost. There's a way out. If you're willing to stop their places and different programs that are in place to help you quit those bad habits. And so I want to urge those who believe that they can stop, seek help. And you will get help because there are people out there who are trained to help those who have become habitual in bad things. And they're there to help people. Alright, so I want to keep that in mind. And so, not because others are doing it, I have to do it. No. You can develop a healthy lifestyle by following the crowd. So that you have to stand out. Something I have to tell the folks, look, yeah, I'm at this party, but I'm not going to drink. Because you know the dangers of drinking. I'm not going to smoke. Your whole mind can be impaired. Now, sometimes when these folks take these illicit drugs, you saw a demonstration there on, on YouTube or on videos for years where people indulge in these illicit practices. They do so and the whole mindset is warped afterwards. Something all it takes is just one sniff of that drug. All it takes is just one sip of that alcohol. And you're messed up for life. So friends of mine, you're watching this program today. I want to urge you, if you're going to develop a healthy lifestyle, you got to find a way to wean yourself off of these bad habits. It doesn't make you mature. I'm mature. It's killing you. You want to be like everybody else? You're going to die like everybody else. If you want to feel a man, drinking doesn't make you a man. You're already a man already. Smoking doesn't make you a man. You're already a man already. When you're born, they say, look, hey, he's a boy. He's a man. I see, you don't do things not to prove your gender. You already prove that way by just being born. And the doctor says, hey, you have a man child. What else do you want? You don't have to prove that you're a man by doing things foolish. Some guys go around thinking that they have to sex their life out of them to prove their man. No, you're already a man already. If you have to prove your man and your man, then you prove you're somebody else, not a man. So I want folks to understand that if you're going to break certain habits, you got to pause and think. Ask yourself questions. Lord, what is this thing doing for my body? Is it really helping me? Is it really as bad as I say it is? So tonight, I want folks to understand that our aim is to help you, help you. That's why we have this topic, your health and you. How is it with you and your health? We're going to pause the next moment for our next soft into the music as we give God thanks again for bringing us thus far. And we 
Indeed, thank you. Welcome back. Welcome back as we wrap up this evening. A few minutes now. And um, we just want to remind folks that there's good news about quitting. Yeah, quitting bad habits and especially smoking. People who quit regardless of age live longer than those who do not or those who continue to smoke. So if you quit, the chances are you could add some life to years, some years to your life. Yes, you can add some years to your life. If you quit smoking, if you quit drinking, you can actually add some years to your life. And so I want people to understand that. Now, folks who do not stop these things or these bad habits find that they will go down very fast. Their health will deteriorate very fast. You have cirrhosis of the liver. You can have lung cancer from smoking. You can have um, oesophageal cancer. Or you can have emphysema. Uh, it, um or this what they call 
and forget the term now, I'm not going to call it wrong, so uh, I'll, I'll call it the next time when I remember the correct term. But you have a lot of respiratory problems when you smoke. And a lot of folks will try to get the impression. I've seen folks at the hospital who are on nebulizers, who have been given nebulizing for a while because of the fact they cannot breathe. But then these people are heavy smokers. And you wonder why do they come to the smoke when the smoking is actually killing them? It's like they expect when they get into these fits where they, they, they lungs like is a heavy weight and they can't breathe and they out of breath and they come to the hospital and they never lie for half an hour, almost two hours being nebulized because of how bad things are. And then they come out sometime. I remember one time I was there and I saw a party lady come in. Look more like more like a rascal lady. She came in and she was on the the machine for a while, they've been nebulized and then I was there with my mom for a while and she was there for a while too because of her sugar level went up so they had to bring it down. But while I'm there, this lady was nebulized and then she was like she was good and then before I left, before my mom left there and I left there, she was back there two or three times getting nebulized again. Why? Because she go back and smoke again. So I don't understand why is it that people keep on indulging in things that are bad. It is causing them respiratory problem. It is affecting your breathing. It's affecting your life. Why do you keep smoking? Is it to prove a point? That each time I get myself in a problem, the doctor has to get me out? At, at some point in time, the doctor is going to tell me, sir, there's nothing I can do for you. And you're hearing that these days a lot. Doctor saying, hey, there's nothing I can do for you. Go home and pray. When, they, when these words are uttered to you folks, it means that you're in a bad state of affairs. It means that your system has no gone on its head. And there's nothing you or anybody can do to save you out of that dilemma. I need to understand that you don't need to be there. But if you're already in a situation that is compromising, hey, we're here to tell there's hope. Because the God who creates you, the same God is saying, I'm the God that heals you. And he says in Exodus, I think it's 15, 26, that if you hearken diligently, to obey these laws and these statutes that I've given, that's God is saying to the folks, I'll put none of these diseases upon you. So disease come upon us when we're disobedient. Disease come upon us because we indulge in wrong habits. And we're told by the Bible that, hey, you don't have to be sick. And if you find yourself in this, he says, turn. Why will you die? Turn. And you shall live. And so my friends today, I want to encourage us, if you want to live longer, break the habit. Ask for help. You can't develop a healthy lifestyle if you keep on indulging in bad habits. You can't develop a healthy lifestyle if you don't want to quit doing what is wrong. Yes, you may accustom these kind of foods. You may be custom of red meat. And then the doctor says, you look, cut out the red meat. Don't argue the doctor, cut it out. I used to like flour and bread. I was brought up in an environment where we bake every week, sometimes twice a week. My father was a baker, my mother's a baker, grandmother's a baker, sister, everybody bakes. But after a while, the flour started to affect me, so I had to give it up. Several days ago, I went to my, I went to my doctor. He's dead now, Dr. Evers Bullen. And he said to me, Sir, tap yum the bread. I'm saying, Sister, so he told me, tap yum the bread. There's nothing I can give you but tell you what is not working well, quit, quit it. And so it took a while for me to get over that. Even now and then I still tried to pinch on flour products and then I had to suffer for it because what? It's habit forming. And so there has to be the willpower to get out of it. But at this point in time, I, I, I think I have gotten the victory over the flower. Yeah. 
have gotten the victory over to some extent. And so it doesn't affect me now as before. But I'm saying now, even though bread is not bad in itself, some people may not be able to digest it. The body is not able to assimilate it at this point in time. And so the best option is to leave it alone. And not only the bread, but there's some folks that have issues with pasta also. There's some folks who have issues with other foods as well. And so whatever foods are causing you problem, leave it out of diet. It doesn't make sense to keep using it because you think, well, it's good. And you know, well, when you finish using it, you're going to headache and backache and all kind of thing. No. We have to reach a point we recognize is that you don't have to feel bad about it. So I may talk with your weak stomach, it's okay. There are other foods you can form to substitute. You can get a substitute for what you cannot eat now. But don't allow the fact that your body can't digest this food that you're going to keep doing because you want to be the in thing. You go to the restaurant or some place to eat and all your friends eating the same stuff and you know that stuff is bad for you. Some folks know that they don't do well with eating fish. It doesn't matter what kind of fish. It doesn't matter about kuta or shaligo or what other kind of fish. And what happened? They continue eating the fish. Then when their friends go home and having a good rest, they're on the toilet or vomiting or by the emergency room. Because what? They know they shouldn't eat the fish but they keep eating it. Or the chicken. Or some kind of food you eat that you know shouldn't eat but because you want to be in the in thing with your friends and eat it and then you're the suffering. Why do you want to suffer? I've gone to places to eat and my friends indulge and say, no, eat that. I say, no. They say, why? I say, no. When you're sleeping and having a good time, I'm up slaving, trying to catch myself. No, no. I don't want that. That's too much stress. I don't want those kind of excitement. I prefer people say you quit and I'm living than if you indulge to make your friends feel good and then you're flapping the wings trying to catch yourself. So my friends, my advice to us this evening is adopt a healthy lifestyle. Quit smoking while you can. Quit drinking while you can. Quit the bad habits while you can. While you still have the willpower to do it, do it. It will, be, it will be good for you. We're only here to help you, my friends. We're only here to guide you in the right path. We're not here to discourage you or to stop you from enjoying life. We want you to enjoy life, but we want you to enjoy life, life abundantly. As the Bible says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you've been held even as your soul prospers. Your soul cannot prosper if you're in a doctor shop every week or every day. No. For you to be prosperous, you got to keep yourself out of the doctor shop. And the only way to keep yourself out of the doctor's office is to change your lifestyle, change your habits. Eat right. Get enough rest. Drink enough water. That's heaven choice beverage. Eat a diet high in fiber, low in fat. Eat a balanced meal. Eat your fruits and your vegetables. Go for your walks or run or swim or cycle, whatever you do, or do your garden. All these help to keep you healthy, my friends. And so, my friends, I want to wish you well for this week. I want to wish you well as you move on in life. And may you remind us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. God didn't make a mistake, and God has given us the recipe, the right foods to eat. Let us eat them, let us drink our water, let us go for exercise, walking is good. If you prefer to run, or prefer to swim, or you go bike with your friends, riding, cycling, or you prefer gardening, whatever brings you comfort, do that. And you can see your life will be better as a result. So my friends, I want to thank God for you being here with us this evening. Thank you for listening to us. We hope that we are able to touch your life in some way, encourage you, maybe challenge you in some areas, but we want to make sure that you keep yourself abreast and to understand that God wants you to be best of health because he's coming back for his people soon 
and he wants the people who are in good health, not people who are sick. And so until we come again next time, God bless you, have a good week, and remember, you are fearfully and wonderfully made, and your soul know it quite well. God bless you, until we come again next time. Thank you for listening to Your Health and You. I do hope that this health session was meaningful and informative. Remember, the Lord's desire is for you to be healthy and prosperous. Be blessed.